nobody will ever be able to figure that out. Nobody will ever tell me a good fucking reason for why Amer why marijuana has not been legalized throughout the entire country. It's so stupid. It's like the last final frontier of the American generation. We're going to be the last generation with the, the, the last free generation, and we're not going to be able to get this done. Washington, Colorado has done it. We can tell that it's not... Um, you know, it's not causing havoc and shit. We've seen the Netherlands. We've seen Portugal. We've seen Uruguay. We've seen lots of motherfuckers that actually get in on this. It's uh, Kentucky's number one cash crop for Kentucky not to do this. Only it's 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 ridiculous. It's retarded. Okay, it's so fucking stupid. It shows how the adults lie to the children. No, it's not Amer. It's not alcohol. Alcohol is way fucking worse. Million fucking times worse. It should not be a Schedule One or Two fucking narcotic. A narcotic? Are you fucking kidding me? You think marijuana's a narcotic? You don't know shit about narcotics, okay? The fucking heroin, the crack, and all the fucking the crocodile, and the fucking devil's breath, and all that fucking bullshit. Feed it to the fucking dogs. It's fucking horse shit. Keep it off the fucking street. Marijuana, you're a bunch of fucking liars, and you've been lying for a long ass time. Uh, not only do you see, uh, uh, you know, the, a lot of fucking states today that's going on, but it's been with America for a long ass time. All the presidents have fucking smoked marijuana. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, Franklin Pierce, Zachary Taylor, Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. I mean, my God, just go down the fucking gauntlet of all the people that Andrew Jackson, they all fucking smoked marijuana. They've all fucking done it, okay? And the fact that all these presidents, it's embedded in our fucking blood. Uh, in the very beginning, you know, there's tobacco and hemp. Well, you had to raise tobacco and hemp if you wanted to survive here. Jamestown survived on tobacco. It survived on drugs. I mean, tobacco is just to fucking cloud your lungs up and shit. So that's how the entire country began. So the entire country began basically on fucking marijuana, okay? The entire the United States Constitution. The United States Constitution is written on hemp paper. The Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal, written on hemp paper. That's how the colonies were writing shit on paper. That's how they was able to do it because they was able to raise hemp. Hemp was integral. It was, it was almost required. I think there was a hip fucking passage, a proclamation. Every able-bodied person must raise hemp. U.S. Constitution, Declaration of Independence, both written on hemp paper. George Washington routinely smoked marijuana to alleviate the pain from his ailing teeth. So his, you know, his teeth were falling out. Supposedly he had wooden teeth. That's not true. He actually was taking the teeth out of his dead slaves and he was using them. So that's fucking great, right? George Washington, fucking third generation plantation owner. A goddamn Indian fucking murdering terrorist fucking piece of shit, right? He, he smoked marijuana. So called father of the country said it should be something, right? It says make the most of the Indian hemp seed and sow it everywhere. That's George Washington. So make the most of the Indian hemp seed, sow it everywhere. You know, go forth and multiply. So that's George fucking Washington, right? He's uh, fucking smoking weed so he doesn't, his teeth don't hurt. And then um, he's talking about how to better cultivate and enhance his crops of marijuana and hemp. So that's George fucking Washington, cannot talk carious. Um, Thomas Jefferson, he smoked, he grew cannabis on his plantation, smuggled Chinese hemp seeds into America. He's believed to give him special smoking blends as personal gifts. So imagine getting a Tommy Jefferson fucking smoke sack, right? He smoked a fucking, this, this is the best fucking, you know, shit that I've come across. Thomas Jefferson come to your house, right? With a fucking baggie, with a fucking bag of weed. Um, here we got some fucking hydroponic fucking Kush, right? He probably wanted to come up with purple Kush. That's probably fucking Thomas Jefferson's blend. So hemp is of first necessity to the wealth and protection of the country. So necessity to the country and to the protection. We got to have hemp. Uh, raise hemp that would we could use it for paper. We wouldn't need any more trees anymore. I mean, seriously, Kentucky Foot should take over this hemp industry thing. They should just fucking wipe this, the floor with everybody with it because there's so many fucking uses that you can use with hemp. It's incredible. Kentucky has legalized hemp. 
It's legalized hemp on the federal level. It's legalized hemp on the state level. And hemp is coming to Kentucky and the university. There's five research institutions and hemp is legal here today. So um, they're going to license out to some of the raisers and, or some of the growers and shit once they find like uses for it. And then once they find a fucking market. Um, but as of right now, hemp is legal in Kentucky. Uh, which is, you know, adds to like 13 other states or so. Um, Washington declared their fucking, uh, uh, which actually I don't even know how the federal government has any jurisdiction over it, I guess because of fucking Schedule 1 narcotic. So why is fucking marijuana, you know, illegal? Well, in Kentucky's the fastest growing you know, prison rates. We need, you know, the prisons need to make their money. So they need to have a new Jim Crow era. We need to arrest the people, get them out, clean the fucking, you know, um, the, the interstates and shit. So there's there's that, and there's also I don't I don't know why it makes it's retarded because Kentucky's number one for cancer, and if Kentucky doesn't give a shit about their old people, they're just gonna let their old people slip down the drain. Who gives a shit? They're old, right? Just make some new space for us. Then you know don't then don't legalize marijuana. But if you give a shit about your grandmothers and you give a shit about your grandfathers, then you need to legalize marijuana so that way the, their cancers will be able to be cured up. They can have you know, it, it, there's a lot of glaucoma and then there's um, um, eating disorders and shit. So, uh, cancer cures fucking cancer. If you don't want your grandmothers and grandfathers to die of cancer, then you should legalize marijuana today. The war on drugs has not been working. It's not going to work. You haven't got rid of it. You're not going to get rid of it. You're just turning people into criminals when they, at the very max, at the very most, it's a public health issue. So if people are smoking fucking weed to a point where, you know, they're just not producing or doing anything in society, then that's when implement, you know, that's when you need to get involved. Um, but ultimately it's the person's body. It's the person's own choice whether they do it or not. Well, how, how does the fucking federal government have any rights over my body? How, you know, they, they don't. It's my fucking body. I'm a goddamn American. You don't have a right over my fucking body. Um, and so the whole fucking argument just makes absolutely no sense. They say to protect yourself, you know, they got to protect you from yourself. You're not protecting anybody. You're not protecting me. You're not protecting them. You're ruining my fucking life because you're a fucking asshole. And, um, and I hurt nobody, but you're hurting me. You know, you're hurting nonviolent offenders. Nonviolent offenders are going to fucking prison. Um, f over 50 to 80% of the people that's in Kentucky prisons right now is there for nonviolent offenses. Probably for some fucking misdemeanor marijuana fucking charge. So we're throw that's what we're doing. We're locking people up over them having, you know, fucking bluegrass cush that's made here in the bluegrass. They're supporting the economy here. It's not killing anybody. It's not fucking meth. It's not crocodile. It's not crocodile, whatever that fucking drug is that just melts your fucking skin and shit. It's not devil's breath, which is coming out of Colombia. It's not cocaine. It's not crack. It's not, you know, heroin. It's, n it's not even close to alcohol. Alcohol is one of the meanest fucking drugs, and it's available widely for anybody that wants to get a hold of it and just get fucked up. And completely fucks your entire, you know, perception up of everything. James Madison once remarked that hemp gave him insight to create a new and democratic nation. So the entire fucking country of America was, oh, came from the induced high of James Madison, you know. Not only was the Constitution written on fucking hemp paper, but James Madison was high as fuck when he says, hey, let's have fucking three branches of government, right? Sign, let's sign it pubilis. Pub pubulous, right? That's pub that's his fucking moniker, right? So the War of eighteen twelve, that's Madison's war. He killed fucking Tecumseh. So I, you know, I'm mixed on some of these fucking. Ba they're supposed to be good because these founding fathers are the ones that had started this country and shit, and they're all a bunch of fucking potheads. But they did a lot of atrocious shit. James Monroe, he started the Monroe Doctrine, which allowed Ronald Reagan to go wipe out all the people in Nicaragua and El Salvador and. Um, the um, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and that other the other country, Salvador, Nicaragua, and uh, um, I don't know, and uh, another fucking Latin America country. So that's the Monroe Doctrine. Basically, you know, Latin America is our so-called backyard when really it's our front yard, and there's actually more land, you know, down there than there is up here. Um, so James Monroe began smoking as an ambassador of France and continued to the age of 73. So James Monroe, he smokes until he's, he's fucking nearly dead. 73 years old, he smokes it his whole fucking life.
James Madison, father of Constitution, fucking dreams up of America when he's on a marijuana binge, right? Even when he's high on marijuana, he thinks up of America. So not only does hemp uh, form an integral fucking industrial uh, historical perspective, you know, without the tobacco and hemp, you wouldn't have Kentucky settlements and you wouldn't have Virginia settlements. Um, but also, you wouldn't have America if James Madison wasn't fucking high on marijuana when he wrote the Declaration or when he wrote the Constitution of the United States. Um, so then you have Andrew Jackson. He smoked a pot with his troops. Zachary Taylor smoked a pot with his troops. Zachary Taylor comes out of Louisville. So if you want to know what kind of caliber Louisvillean people are, Kentucky people are, um, look at Zachary Taylor because Zachary Taylor is the perfect emblematic person of this area. But let's, uh, we'll come back to that. Franklin Pierce was also a pothead, and he says actually the only good thing about the Mexican-American War was marijuana. That's the only thing that come out, you know, good that come out of the Mexican-American War. Abraham Lincoln said two of his favorite things are sitting on my front porch smoking a pipe of sweet hemp and playing my Hooner harmonica. Jane, John F. Kennedy, his closest acquaintances say Kennedy used cannabis regularly to control his back pain even during his term and actually planned on legalizing marijuana during his second term. Jimmy Carter, along with his efforts to legalize marijuana, he also hosted many marijuana smoke-filled events at the White House, and this leads most to assume that Jimmy Carter at least tried it at some point in his life. George W. Bush said he didn't want some little kid doing what he tried, so therefore he tried marijuana. He's also snorting fucking cocaine and shit, probably I mean, getting drunk and driving drunk and all this other shit. Bill Clinton, he says he never fucking inhaled, but he was like, I went to England, I tried it one or two times, but I didn't inhale, I didn't like it. Well, how do you know you didn't like it if you didn't inhale? Oh, because you're a fucking liar. Barack Obama said he li he inhaled it, and, and that was the point, probably he liked it, that's why I inhaled it, right? Um, yeah, so those are the presidents that had actually smoked marijuana in um, in our nation's history. Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Jimmy Carter, John F. Kennedy, Franklin Pierce, Zachary Taylor, Andrew Jackson, James Monroe, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. And the uh, Constitution, Declaration of Independence was written on hemp paper. Hemp it was, and uh, marijuana and tobacco was very much in the very beginning settlements, the colonial settlements in Kentucky, in Virginia, in the beginning of America. So to not think that this is very much in our bloodstream, it's been here the whole time, it's still here today. In Appalachia, one of the biggest raisers of marijuana throughout the entire eastern seaboard. Um, there's moonshiners out there, legacy of not trusting the authoritarian fucking people, um, pillbillies. And, um, you know, so to sit there and try to actually tax Kentucky on the thing that could liberate it is fucking stupid as fuck. Instead of putting people in prisons, you should be setting those motherfuckers up with their own businesses. We should have lots of little fucking coffee shops, um, just like they're doing in Denver, Colorado, and they're doing in Seattle, Washington. So we need to have legalized marijuana, not just hemp. Let's legalize it all. Hemp isn't enough. So as a German Kentucky nationalist, as a social anarchist, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm not being patriotic, but seriously, uh, these fucking presidents are like goddamn terrorists. They're like fucking really shitty fucking people. Um, I want to sit there and point out Zachary Taylor and, uh, and Washington. So, I mean, all these guys, all these fucking potheads, right? You have a whole fucking cornucopia of fucking American presidents who smoke in pot. Um, you know, the father of the fucking Constitution, the entire whole the dividing the branches of government between legislative, executive, and judicial was James Madison. James Madison was fucking high when he wrote the goddamn Constitution. So it's written on marijuana paper. It was the ideas was thought in the fucking smoke of marijuana. So the uh, idea of America not being in favor of legalization, not being in the favor of of owning your own bodies is just, you know, mind-blowingly fucking stupid and backwards. Um, George Washington was, you know, raised hemp everywhere, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking at all these presidents. It's in the fucking courts, in the bloodstream of what America used to be about, but not today, not anymore. America today is just so fucking devoid of 
the freedom fighters and people that cared about, you know, the things that were actually going on. Um, but back in the day, even like the fucking Washingtons, this guy is a fucking, he's a terrorist. He's attacking the Iroquois villages. He's just wiping out Seneca villages. He's a town destroyer, 28 of 30 Seneca towns in a five-year period. In 1779, he just wiped out. That was under General John Sullivan. So General John Sullivan's massacre just fucking wiped out 28 of fucking 30 Seneca towns that was going on in northern, you know, that was living in northern Ohio. But George Washington, he's the one that started the French and Indian War. So the French and Indian War, 1754. This is like 20 years before the fucking revolution even began. So as a fucking British agent, he's a British man, 21, 22 years old, walking around the fucking Ohio forest or Pennsylvania, and he um, comes across some French ambassadors and just fucking kills all of them, including this one guy named Sieur de Jumonville. So Jumonville was fucking French and a uh, leader, some sort of great fucking general leader or some shit and um and so eventually they surround fort necessity and george washington and they make george washington go back you know um they he surrendered but he was able to march back with his troops so he was able to fucking live how he was able to negotiate that shit when he signed on a fucking piece of paper that he assassinated the